Hello, bot fans, and welcome to another edition of Red Square, Blue Square, your go-to for BattleBots recap and reaction. I'm your host, Richard Tiemann, and this is episode number nine, and I have officially run out of all of my BattleBots t-shirts, and it is also minus five degrees here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, so I have decided to dress more appropriate for the occasion. It's cold outside. It's a little warmer in here and things are really heating up because we have finally reached that oh so special moment in any BattleBot season, the postseason. The tournament of 32 has been announced and I have not one but two guests in it and we're going to break it all down for you as well as the final regular season fight card. So remember, if you have not watched the most recent episode of BattleBots, John? John! Warning, this episode is full of spoilers. So you've been warned. You heard him. So what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead and introduce you to tonight's special guests in the Red Square. Her bot has one of the best paint jobs out there. Very easy on the eyes. However, her last name is probably one of the hardest to pronounce. It's Jen Herkenroder of Hijinx. Welcome, Jen. How are you? Thank you. Doing well. And in the blue square, he's BattleBot's favorite villain. Well, at least in my eyes. And I don't even think he sees himself as a villain. But you know him, you love him. Jake Ewert, hail Hydra. Welcome, Jake. How's it going, guys? <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a wicked episode, this one, I think. It really was. You guys started it off against Uppercut. It went to decision. I mean, holy crap, you finish uh, the season with an impressive victory. Uh, I mean, how, how do you feel overall? Well, I mean, it did really good in two matches. And then that, you know, that huge one was uh, could have brought me down. Definitely. I did not think going into this, we were going to be number one. Um, not even close. Uh, but I guess for some reason they thought it was good enough or they needed to say prop the other bots up that one that i won against so i mean if i'm number one then they're already falsely up higher on their ranking seating so i mean i already said last year that the seatings are like non-existent they pick their matches and then the seatings kind of work their way out so i don't really feel like i'm the number one at all so I want on this episode for us to officially move on from the bike rack talk. But before we do, um, Chris, Kenny, and I had a great conversation about you and your family and, and the Waiachi team and everything. And uh, I made the joke about you guys being villains. Now, uh, if you've ever seen Survivor, there was a season where they did heroes versus villains. And the host, Jeff, asked everyone on the villains team. He said, does anyone feel like they're not on the right team and every one of them raised their hands. What did we ever do? You know, like, why are we the villains? So you have Jameson Go, who they kind of try to make a villain one year. And then Ray Billings, they kind of try to make a villain the next. And he more or less embraces it. Oh yeah. I don't think they tried to make you a villain whatsoever, but you have fully lived up to that role. So was that, <laughs> I mean, was that the intent? Like talk to us about the uh, role of Jake Ewert, the villain of BattleBots. Well, uh, I mean, speaking of rack, we'll get this out of the way right away. We're making these for Halloween costumes for next year. So if you need a little hat, you know, we can make a, make a little hat. But as far as the villain goes, I mean, they're, it's not great to play that. I mean, watching the online talk and uh, I mean, sometimes complete disrespect for me and the team is, is quite, you know, over the top. But I mean, if I got to play the villain for the TV, I, I'll do it. I mean, I, I know I don't play it as good as, as uh, Ray does. Um, I don't have that intimidation factor um, like they have. Um, but uh, if it works for TV and, and they can, they can kind of cut me and make me look the way they want to and they think it's good for tv so i, I guess i'll just keep playing along well i i don't know after this season you might uh take the place of ray on that intimidation uh factor there because uh ray was only one and two this season you finished three and oh very impressive and i don't think there's anybody out there that wants to fight hydra right now but we'll talk about that in a second jen your hijinks made it into the 32. Congratulations. But do you think you could play the villain ever in BattleBots or are you just too nice? It's a tough thing because there's another uh, new team this year, Malice. They are really kind of leaning into being the villains. Like Supervillain is their theme. They named the robot Malice. 
Uh, but I think that has had some unintended consequences for how they interact with fans, where some fans were like, you guys are the bad guys and I want my kids to root for the heroes. So there's, there has been like an interesting conversation around how you present yourself. And uh, I, I think at one point I was like, yeah, it'd be cool to be the villain. I think that would be fun. But at the same time, I don't, th I don't think I could pull it off, I think. So I, I think at some point, if you play the game long enough, you're gonna get into a controversial fight or you're gonna get like the red haze during the match and you're gonna do a late hit and you're gonna be the villain at some point. Like if you don't die the hero, you will be the villain. It's gonna come, that day will happen. It's very true. And uh, I, I love professional wrestling and a lot of them will say, you know, it's almost easier being the heel because it's easier to provoke people booing you than cheering you. You're like, you got to really go above and beyond to get people <laughs> to cheer you. And, and I know that yeah. BattleBots is a completely different world, but I feel with the absence of fans in attendance, they had to do something to kind of make up for that, that additional time there. And there was some storytelling in the back that was going on where I was like, okay, I, I see what they're doing with this. And Jake, you played the part marvelously i hope to see more of that in the tournament at 32 jen you guys did great this season as well obviously you're 29th in the tournament so I, I guess the first question for both of you and jake will start um is you know you go into this you end up beating uppercut a uh, bot that a lot of people were thinking this could be the number one seed and then oh. you beat them in impressive fashion let me just get that out there right now and so you guys are announced as the number one seed. So do you feel that you deserved the number one seed? Uh, no, not really. Um, really? Uh, I know coming into that fight uh, that Uppercut was probably the one, number one feet seed going into that fight for sure. Um, so, of course, beating him would have helped us, but I still don't think they should have seeded us probably as high as they should have. I mean, top eight. Um, the huge fight definitely hurt us. You know, it was convincing, you know, I did my thing and you know whatever but i didn't take any damage but that the overall fight i guess and the the look of it and how it was portrayed on tv it's it should not have shown as good as it was and i probably shouldn't have been number one it is what it is I, i'm sure they were probably thinking okay if we don't put him at number one being three and oh and having all those wins um and against the opponents that he did this is how we get more bike racks in the tournament of <laughs> uh <laughs> no i don't think they want bike racks but i mean there was a lot of other bots that were three and oh that put on really good fights all the time it's it's whatever it is i mean you can go with pedigree from previous years and add all that up but i mean this is this in itself is going to be the controversy you know all the fights were good this episode but now this is the new controversy so you get the win over uppercut a fantastic match one of the best uh on the fight card if not the best of the fight card and one of the best this season it goes to decision um great way to start off the last uh, fight card before the 32 uppercut though doesn't get the number two seed they drop to number four so that's interesting i knew that they would have to be top five but i you know like you said maybe number one but i think this match definitely determined a lot Jen, on the last episode, we talked a lot about if the fights that were televised and non-televised would have any kind of impact on whether a bot got into the 32 or not. Now, you guys, uh, you know, this is uh, your first outing as team captain. You have a great bot, and uh, you guys get into the tournament. At 29, though, you did not have all of your fights televised. So how do you feel about where you were seated? Tracer had a rough time. This was Tracer's first year as well. Um, we've had a look under the hood since the fight happened and like we kind of understand what what went down inside of tracer but that fight i understand why they didn't show it they basically were out in one hit uh, the entire filming of that the lead up the fight the conclusion was like 40 seconds and like it, it kind of did belong in a montage and like making a whole space for it on the show when you have other really interesting fights. I can see that being a tough call. For me, because we won the fight, I wanted it shown because that made me feel good about my life choices and building this robot. But I can understand why I didn't make the cut. Um, it was so fast that you can't see what the robot is really capable of doing. In the Claw Viper fight, I felt like we had a good solid start. We damaged their weapon in a way that it was no longer usable. Uh, we were cutting up their undercarriage and pieces of their robot were coming off. We were like, doing great. 
Um, and then, you know, we had some drive issues because we crunched both of the gearboxes. Balance on those things, I, I kind of understand the low seat. It kind of makes sense. Uh, it is a new bot. I'm a new captain. We, we're doing good. I mean, there's on the field, like there are other <laughs> robots that are not doing as well. You know, yeah. other new robots with new robot problems, other old robots with old robot problems. So on balance, getting into the tournament, I'm fine with the low seat. I think it's all right. Well, it gives you a perfect chance for an upset, which uh, next fight on the card tonight was Sawblaze over Rusty, uh, also by decision, but Sawblaze over Rusty, I think we can all agree, biggest upset of the night. I mean, who saw that one coming? <laughs> but uh, Rusty did so great this season. Um, I mean, really hats off to him for being the one man show and uh, sticking it out there and, and going three minutes with one of the best out there. Jameson going Sawblaze will return to uh, the tournament and we'll talk about their seat in a second uh, tantrum over gamma nine by knockout tantrum two and one end game over hypershock by knockout end game two and one very impressive victories in those two p1 over SME by knockout um oh, p1 look at us <laughs> yeah i got my p1 Go P1. Go vroom, vroom. <laughs> so P1 gets a win. Uh, SME, interesting concept. We'll see what happens with uh, future versions of it and what they do to make that thing better if uh, if they decide to stick with its design. Beta ends its season 3-0 over Grabot. A mean hammer, controversial decision, but uh, they're legends and they're going to be in the tournament as well. And then finally, Whiplash over Valkyrie by decision. Both end the season two and one and you knew that these two were probably going to come down to uh their strength of opponent uh, which might have been who won against each other um mm -hmm. whiplash and maddie vasquez and his driving ability just continues to really surprise and amaze but uh, leanne so close to to going undefeated what's really interesting about this season is that it was just three fights and i remember seeing a comment somewhere in one of the the groups somebody asked what there's no desperado tournament this year the whole season was a desperado tournament you have to fight three fights to to prove you're worthy of a tournament that's double the size of a regular one so yeah this this could have been called battle bots desperado and uh going into 32. so the fights to me that jump out were Hydra Uppercut and Valkyrie and Whiplash, but you look at this field of 32 um, and we had one is Jake, four is Uppercut, and then we also had the number three, Copperhead. We talked last week's episode that uh, Zach really had a mean bot. Uh, Jake, how impressed have you been with Copperhead and what Zach's done there? I mean, we went up against him with Sal, so we know how hard he hits. Uh, I mean, that thing, deshelling megabytes, uh, that's not an easy task. Huh? So there, there's, I mean, they got that thing dialed in. Um, their drive is a little wonky sometimes, but the, the spinner usually keeps going really good. Yeah, I, I love what he's been able to accomplish. Uh, their fight against Black Dragon was just, wow. Um, again, very impressive. Uh, Jen, what do you think of, of Copperhead and uh, being the number three seed into the tournament? I think that's a fair seed. Uh, I'm a fan of Copperhead. And you know, season four, Scorpios went up against Copperhead. And uh, even though Scorpios won that fight, the amount of damage that drum delivered to the undercarriage of Scorpios, that had me like late nights two nights in a row trying to fix that and that's like denting and carving out holes in ar 400 so there's no doubt in my mind that copperhead is a very effective hard-hitting robot like yeah um again I, it's a bot that i i personally wouldn't want to go up against uh, i don't know if there's many that can and and not be at a disadvantage except for ones like black dragon and maybe mm, tombstone witch doctor i mean you know all the names that you think of when you think of a battle bots postseason tournament but so if jake is number one and uppercut is number four and copperhead is number three well who's number two that is blood sports and uh, they were in my top five i talked to justin marple last week and he thought, yeah, it's going to come down to what the judges saw. I asked him if he thought them backing off in their last fight was going to hurt their seating. Clearly, the judges did not see it that way as they get the number two. So I think uh, instead of discussing 
snubs who's not in this 32. I mean, there's 32 spots and we knew that not everyone getting in was going to have a winning record. So you, all you had to do was have one really impressive fight and or win and you were probably going to be on the radar somewhere. But there's a few that I disagree with where they're at. Uh, one in particular is jackpot at 11. I, it's pretty pretty low for three and all bot. Really yeah, I, I I saw that and I was like, wait, are we talking about the same jackpot here? The bot on a budget? Everybody's talking about this bot coming out and just wrecking things. Jen, um, were you were you surprised by this one? And is there another bot on there that also surprised you where they were seated? When it comes to jackpot. One of the things we always have to be aware of going into the tournament is how many spares do you have and how rapidly can you turn around a large repair? And in the case of Jackpot, they've got some really good sponsorship and they have been really good about turning around repairs quickly, doing full teardown and rebuild every time they go into a fight and then also improving the robot. But I, I think with it being such an inexpensive build compared to some of the other like forty to a hundred thousand dollar top tier robots. I think there may be some may have been a consideration that they were going to have a hard time doing a rapid repair, rapid turnaround if they lost an entire drive. I guess in the tournament it wouldn't really matter, but maybe this is a little snobbery. Because <laughs> you're not gonna have to worry if on a single elimination. There's no reason to be concerned about whether or not you have spares after you've been knocked out. Now that I have completed that thought. Jake, where would you have seated Jackpot? Uh, probably a little bit higher, maybe top eight. I mean, he, he did get the 3-0 wins. They weren't always super convincing because the drive was, you know, not there all the time. But he, he did put massive hits on. So he could have he could have been a little bit higher than a few of those other bots, I think. But um the real travesty is, is Beta, right? I mean, being so low down in there with, with his 3 0 wins as well. Yeah, Beta is 13th. They'll take on Ribot at 20 in the first round. Um, it just, yeah, there's some of these. Uh, Black Dragon 5, okay. Mad Catter at 12, though. Uh, maybe strength of opponent is what was really low. their you know, difference maker, their tiebreaker. And then uh, Tombstone 21. I, to me, I feel like seeding a bot like Tombstone would be the hardest this season because you know that when they lose, it's almost like a fluke occurrence and they're always going to give you quality fights, but they have lost more than they've won this year. And they were both losses against tough opponents too that are in, the, you know, the 32. So how do you justify putting them over somebody with a re winning record. Well, I, I don't know if you do. So they're going to be in the tournament and they're going to have a chance to, uh, I guess, have some upsets if you would even technically consider them that. Lockjaw 14, Shatter at 19. We talked about Shatter last week and just how pre impressive Adam's driving was and, and being able to really um, be just as good of a hammer bot as Beta is. And, and maybe, uh, <laughs> I mean, it would take some doing because they're on opposite sides. So we we won't get that before the championship, but- Hammer uh, final, that's what we need. It's a hammer yeah, final. Yeah, two hammer bots in the final, absolutely. End game at number six, Perfect Phoenix 27. Um, Mammoth at 20, or Mammoth at 30. Uh, I don't know if I agree with 30, but whenever you have anything that's over like a top 10, when you get, you know, 17, 18, 19, and then beyond, it, it's splitting hairs at that point. But Mammoth, I thought, was really impressive just as a whole this season. Um, uh, Jake, your thoughts on on Mammoth, and uh, would you use a bike rack if you had to go up against them? <laughs> uh, probably wouldn't use a bike rack against Mammoth. <laughs> but, I mean, you get past that top 20, and I think they mostly look like a, mat, a mosh pit of the bots, right? So they just pick and choose their matchups after the fact of who they already have in the brackets and then okay between these four bots which one do we want this fight to kind of look forward so i mean it definitely in the bottom four bots um, like hypershock going against me they could have picked any of the top four or bottom four bots there and probably went up against me but they thought that hypershock would be a better fight so that's how they i think they did it i mean once you get past the top 10 definitely past the top 20 they're just kind of picking and choosing at that point so we'll go over this real quick. Uh, they announced this at the end of the episode, groups of four. So in the fourth group, number four, Uppercut, and they'll take on Jen's hijinks. And then Beta, Ribot, 
Black Dragon, Slamo, Mad Catter, Tombstone. Um, I'm glad that Slamo made it. And then uh, in the third group, Copperhead against Mammoth, Lockjaw, Shatter, Endgame, Perfect Phoenix, Jackpot, Rotator got in at 22. And then in group two, Bloodsport, Gruff, Fusion, Tantrum, uh, Sawblaze, Kraken at 26. Scorpios made the top 10, Witch Doctor 23. And then group number one, Jake's Hydra against Hypershock, who snuck in there with the last seed. Malice, Gigabyte, Whiplash, Huge, Valkyrie, Sub-Zero. So before we address the elephant in the room in that first group, let's talk about how, um, Jake, you wouldn't face your uh, your other Team Waiachi member, uh, Reese, uh, unless it's for the giant nut. Have you guys talked about that at all at, when the Tournament of 32 was announced? Uh, I mean, it's always right there. Um, in previous seasons, we've always been matched up the second round. So if we would have ever won in our first round, which we've never have uh, with the, the Waiachi curse that we've had throughout every season so far, um, we would have mostly likely been matched up. So this season was actually a, a little bit different. So we we're on different sides of the bracket. We won't be matched up. So maybe that's the reason why we might actually win a match or something. I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but also in that group, Kraken at 26. Now I know that their record was one and two, but this was a bot and there was a few out there this season that I don't feel like they were what their record was. They had the controversial decision against Black Dragon, um, top five fight of the year against uh, Witch Doctor, and then a tough loss against Huge. But like Chris and Kenny and I talked about, Huge really needed that win probably more than Matt did. But uh, all three were quality fights. And this is a bot that you do not see every day. In fact, other than Scorpios and maybe one or two others, it's the only one that actually looks like what it's named after. So I disagree with 26, but then again, I, I don't know where else I would put them. Maybe top 15. Jen, do you think Kraken was a top 15 or even higher bot? I, I think Kraken could be a top 15 bot. He's done so much work. The, that team has done a lot of work to make the robot very reliable. And uh, I think the, the quality of the improvements over time are just self-evident. And going on Witch Doctor, I mean, that was just, that was fun to watch that had to be fun to drive as well uh but it's become a very effective robot it's evolved really dramatically in the past couple of years yeah i mean how how important has driving been jake you're driving against uppercut tonight was just amazing uh, uh, i mean <laughs> like every chance you got to get under him and flip him i was, was just like jake can wreck this tournament uh i mean there was a lot of swing and misses i mean there, that bot was kind of gangly. It's only a little triangle. So there was a lot of misses right next to the spinners left and right. So it wasn't my best performance. And that floor is just killing me right now. Uh, I'm going to have to put some reverse bevels on my wedges or something to make it around there. Cause I'm getting stuck. Like you can just see me boom, and just stop. So, I mean, looking at the tournament, we're going to have to make a few more changes yet. Um, but going back to the top 32, I mean, there's a lot of bots that are top tier that are like sprinkled throughout everything like witch doctor and your tombstones that are going to mess up every bracket really i mean you, you're they're supposed to be super high and now they're low and they're going to get a lot of mismatches and there can be a lot of like weird things going on with the brackets this year yeah and you know you say a lot of misses but um you're a wisconsin guy uh, there was a quarterback for the packers uh, brett Favre. he threw a lot of touchdowns but you know what else he threw a lot of interceptions yes, so yes he did yes, he did <laughs> I love that we could talk about that. Um, but other than that, I, I don't know if there's really any other, like I said, unless we're talking about really getting down to, to split hairs here, there's just a few that kind of jump out. I think Jackpot was the biggest one where I was like, oh, they're where? And then Kraken was another one. But the rest, you know, um, I'm not on the committee. I don't know what they see when, when they're putting this thing together. But I would just like to think that at, with only three, that you're really considering the factors beyond just wins and losses but okay elephant in the room um there's another bot in group number one jake um uh, they're they're uh they're huge and oh uh, you you noticed that did you <laughs> i did notice that like i'm watching the reveal and i'm just like okay all right so okay don't see them there and then group three okay and then group two no 
No, they wouldn't. No, they did. <laughs> they did. And it's not by coincidence either. They definitely want not. this one to happen. They they want like it's it's one thing to have you guys on the same side of the bracket. It's another thing to have you in the same group of the bracket. Like they mm-hmm. want to make sure that that's got a high likelihood of uh, happening. So I, I guess the big question would be is did the judges or the powers that be at BattleBots have any kind of discussion with you when they announced the 32 and what you could or could not do going into a potential rematch with Huge? Absolutely not. They didn't talk to me one iota after that fight. Uh, no, nobody really did, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, what were you mad at Jake? Was, was there hard feelings there? I mean, it wasn't against you, but, uh, you know, I mean, there's there's some tension between builders sometimes. She, she was on that side of the pit. We'll just say that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this has actually forced some, like, no joke philosophical debates and discussions between team captains, between teams, on my own team about what constitutes the difference between like taking a reasonable advantage or being reasonably prepared for a new fight or doing your homework about the robot and then making adaptations versus like being a dick. I'll tell you what, at the end of the day, I'm glad it wasn't my call. I'm (laughs) glad it was not up to me. I would love to see a rematch. I mean, as a fan, as much as the builder, I'd love to see a rematch. I think they would be fun. It'd be fun for me. I don't know how you feel about it, but I mean, I think it'd be great. <laughs> I, I do love a rematch. I, I really do. There's a couple that I would love to see. Um, that one, like, I, I just don't know because BattleBots, as much of a competitive nature as it is and leans towards, it's still there's so many differences. It's pre recorded. It's a competition that airs after everything is said and done. They will do things as far as cut, edit, produce to make things look a certain way or sound a certain way mm-hmm. from the fights all the way up to if somebody looks like a hero or a villain. No. So when it comes to rematches and things that you want to see, I, I'm always up for it because the fan of competitive sport, competitive sports in me loves the idea of, of seeing, well, what would another match up between these two look like but um because BattleBots is that family environment where you guys are lending each other parts and everybody's there to help one another for the most part it's like do you really want to try to reignite this fire again <laughs> so I, I i don't know i if it happens yeah i'll watch it but i'm not going to be cheering for jake and for john to help their bots advance so that we do get to see it i want great fights and i think that we've got you know, 16 great matchups going into a tournament of 32, which leads me to uh, the last question here for you guys. Uh, Jen, is there a matchup that jumps out at you that you're really excited to see in this first round of the big tournament for BattleBots? I can't choose just one. It's like choosing a favorite (laughs) child. They're all going to be good. I think fans are going to want to see every single fight. Yeah, you guys go up against Uppercut, um, a bot that uh, me and Jake, both agree could have easily been one or two they are number four somehow some way and uh jake made sure that they are uh built to last for the tournament after flipping them so many times in this last fight so when you guys saw the announcement of who you were fighting first uh, i mean was it like a oh yeah oh when when i saw that lineup first i was elated to be in the tournament i'm like yes this is awesome uppercut crap let's go back to the pits let's get ready have a good breakfast get some sleep this is going to be a thing yeah there's two that jump out to me um mad catter and tombstone i feel like is going to be a sleeper fight uh if ray billings loses to uh martin mason i i I don't know if he'll ever be able to live that one down the the post fight interviews would definitely be worth watching it's gonna be exciting watching those two deck it out afterwards you know (laughs) Um, another one that I just saw here was Jackpot and Rotator. Um, I know that Victor and Rotator didn't have the best outing with their three fights, but uh, I think Jackpot might go into this one thinking, you, you see to just wear on this. We're not even top 10 and want to take it out on Rotator. But uh, the veteran, you have to give them advantage. Uh, Victor knows how to plan for a fight. Sometimes things just go terribly wrong. Uh, Valkyrie and Sub Zero. I actually had Leanne and, uh, and Logan on the same show together, so I'm I'm secretly excited for that. But no, I think it's a good field of 32, and uh, this last fight card really um, 
to put a lot of things as far as if you were on the fence about who might be where. Uh, Jake, you guys in Hydra, I, I think whether you believe you do or not deserve to be in that number one seed because uh, I think if you said, well, I don't, well, who would you put in place of you and why? And could you really argue that Uppercut or one of the other two deserve to be there instead of you like Bloodsport? And, and how do you argue that? So uh, props to you guys really on a great season. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, I would either pick um, one of the, the two or three spots. I mean, Uppercut obviously can't be a higher than me because he kind of lost. But, I mean, he, he could have been easily four, and then I could have been three, and then the other two could have been, you know, slosh up between one and two. Um, in between Bloodsport and, and Copperhead, there is really good showings on all three of their fights on both their bots. So it's, I mean, it could have been either way, really. Well, I thank you guys so much for your time. I'm excited for the 32. I'll probably uh, print out a bracket and fill out my own because that's just what you do with, with tournament brackets. You print them out, you fill them out. But I don't know if there's any kind of March Madness like pool going on at office, uh, you know, uh, water coolers at, at work for, for BattleBots ones. But hey, if there is a group um, comparing brackets, absolutely. I'll, I'll get in on that action. But uh, I look forward to seeing you guys again next season. I, I don't know why I'm talking about next season. We've got the 32 32 oh, is announced next dude. season let's go next season All right. <laughs> and we're we'll ready to go <laughs> always next week always. always next week yep new episodes of battle bots the tournament begins next week on discovery 8 7 central new episodes of red square blue square every friday whenever we get around to uploading them so for jake ewert and jen herkenroder <laughs> the two toughest last names to pronounce i'm richard teeman this has been red square blue square thank you guys so much see you guys thank you thanks a lot for having me